In campaign 2018, right now polls are open in several states across the country. Voters are casting their ballots in statewide primaries in Washington, Kansas, Missouri, and Michigan. There's also a special election for the House of Representatives in Ohio's 12th district. The race is to replace Republican Congressman Pat Tiberi. Tiberi announced that he was leaving the House last October to join an Ohio business advocacy group. And Democrat Danny O'Connor, the elected recorder for Franklin County, is running against Republican State Senator Troy Balderson. President Trump flew to Ohio over the weekend to campaign for Balderson. But to continue our incredible success, we must elect more Republicans and we must elect Troy Balderson. We have to elect Troy. So get your friends, get your neighbors, get your family, and get out and vote for Troy on Tuesday. CBS News political correspondent Ed O'Keefe is in Westerville, Ohio, following the race. Ed, let's get to the president's endorsement in just a second, but I just want to get a sense of why this is sort of electorally so important when you look at the history of this district. Sure. And, you know, we wouldn't normally be here, Rena, if not for this special election and the fact that just in the last few days, this race has tightened up considerably. This is a district that President Trump won by 11 points in 2016. This is a district where Republicans outnumber Democratic voters by about seven percentage points. So you'd think the GOP has a lock on a place like this. But for whatever reason, if you believe the surveys, they don't right now. Uh, this is a part of the state that has voted for Mitt Romney, John McCain in the past. Uh, Barack Obama did decently during his, uh, during his uh, two terms, but never really won it outright. And for whatever reason, the Democrat on the ballot here, Danny O'Connor, has come up and is now running even with Troy Balderson, the Republican who the president supports, who the vice president supports, who even Ohio Governor John Kasich supports. No other Republican in this country has brought together Trump and Kasich <laughs> in recent years. So that shows you how critical this is for Republican fortunes, not only right now, but going into the fall. Mm, so this would be a really big deal if the Democrats were to steal this? Absolutely, uh, because this is on the list of potential pickups for Democrats, but it's far down the list. I mean, you look at the most 30 most competitive race, 40 most competitive races in the country. It doesn't list there. It's further back. And what Democrats point out is there are dozens of other districts across the country where the Republican advantage is slightly smaller. This is what we call an R plus seven district. Well, there's R plus three, four or five, six all across the country. If they can do it here, they say, Imagine what they're going to be able to do in other districts across the country. This is exactly the kind of suburban, rural mix, a place where you have just enough Democrats and disaffected Republicans, they believe, independent voters as well, where they could conceivably just eke out a win, maybe by a narrow margin, maybe by something bigger. Mm, yeah, that suburban, rural mix, it'll be fascinating to watch in Ohio in particular, Ed. You actually spoke to the candidates in this race. I want to actually play a clip for you from your interview with the Democrat, Danny O'Connor. Your supporters uh, suggest that you've been able to win over some Republicans. Uh, how, you, how are you doing this? <laughs> I'm engaged to one first and foremost, I guess. But, uh, you know, we, we'll go anywhere. We'll talk to anyone about issues that matter around the kitchen table, how you pay your mortgage, how you save for retirement, how you afford these rising health care costs. And uh, we go where the voters are. There's no community we won't go to. There's no community I won't represent. Uh, there's no issue I won't address. Ed, what's his strategy in this race? It's that message of inclusion and the idea that he would work with Republicans where it makes sense. I asked him yesterday, uh, is there something you think you could work with Republicans on, even though you're a Democrat? And he said, well, of course, the opioids issue, for one. Uh, but he said, you know, if Democrats retake Congress in, in November, uh, or at least the House of Representatives, he thinks they need to work almost immediately next year on an infrastructure spending plan. Well, that's something that the president has expressed an interest in doing. Some say he should have started his presidency with that. Uh, but there potentially is a chance for him to work with Republicans. And yet, he, he makes clear, Republicans have not done a good job of representing the district, of preserving health care, Social Security, and Medicare, sort of basic Democratic principles uh, that are resonating when you combine that with the fact that he's a 31-year-old young guy who's talking about new leadership, a need for fresh perspective in Washington. He believes, his campaign believes, that it will resonate and get him over the top. Mm. 
Ed, coming back to the president for a second, you know, Ohio Republican Governor John Kasich yeah. sort of stirred up a little bit of controversy on Sunday when he said that Troy Balderson didn't actually invite the president to state. What's going on here, and what does Balderson have to say? Have we heard from him? We have. Uh, you know, this, I think, speaks to the ongoing conflict that Governor Kasich and President Trump have had since the 2016 race. Kasich sees the world and the Republican Party far differently than the sitting president. And so I think this was a chance to sort of needle not only the president, but point out to Balderson and Republicans running his race that they may not be doing it correctly. I asked Balderson about that yesterday when we were at a county fair with him. Here's what he had to say. Did the president coming on Saturday help or hurt? It's huge help. Um, a lot of enthusiasm. We were around the district yesterday, um, and that was a total conversation, was how energized it was, and, you know, I'm still seeing it even today, uh, out and about to the district, uh, of how energized uh, people are from that. So just having him come helps people yeah, realize it, that it, it's it, happening it, at all? It realizes that, the, you know, the election's going on, but just also having Donald Trump here. Um, I've had Mike Pence, Vice President, and the President of the United States here for me in six days. Uh, these communities are really excited and, you know, they, they feel a sense of, you know, they know we're here. They know they exist. So fascinating. And I couldn't imagine uh, if he had said what the Twitter reaction from the president would have been if he had said I didn't want him to come here. Exactly. And I will say this. We were at another polling location this morning in a town near here called Powell, uh, where Republicans had told us we might be able to find some Republican supporters. Uh, we found a few, but in talking to some of the voters at this one location we were at, they said, seeing the president come here to my backyard convinced me even more to go vote for the Democrat in this race. That's how much they didn't like him being here. Wow. That's how much they don't like him at all. So that may be what the governor was speaking to, that he knew that there's just enough of a swing vote in this district, maybe disaffected Republicans, who saw the president come to their neighborhood over the weekend and said, that's a reason why I'm going to vote against him. That is so fascinating to hear that those folks told you that, Ed, because typically when a president comes to an area, it mobilizes people and, and gives them a sense of how important the president feels that our, our area is. Uh, I do want to ask you, though, Ed, since you've had a chance to speak to these voters in Ohio, what are the issues that they're most concerned about? Well, the president, for one, uh, whether they're supporting the Republican or the Democrat, he comes up in the conversation. So this idea that the president won't be a factor, I think, has been disproven by people, at least in this congressional district, only one of the 435, but indicative of what we might see this fall. You talk to people who prefer Danny O'Connor, the Democrat, they say they want to see health care preserved, they want to see Social Security taken care of, and they want to see Democrats and Republicans in Washington working together again. Inclusiveness, cohesiveness, those are words we're hearing from voters. They want to see more of that from their elected leaders in Washington. You talk to the Republicans about why they're supporting Balderson, and it's very simple. They say he supports the president. Why wouldn't I support him? Mm, so telling. Ed O'Keefe in Ohio's 12th district on the ground there. Ed, thank you so much for your reporting.